Hi, so today I'm going to be talking about copywriting and intellectual properties and that sort of thing because a person, uh, one of my patrons on Patreon asked me to talk about it and they're curious about it and so I'll read what they asked me and then I'll talk to you as best I can about what I know of this topic and then I will also lead you to some more information. Hi, my name is Luis Escobar. I'm a storyboard artist on the Simpsons television show. I've been working on this show for over 20 years now and I'm here to empower you. So. Uh, this is the question that I've been asked about copyright. I know you're not a lawyer, so you can't give me legal advice. And this is true, by the way. I am not a lawyer, so what I'm going to tell you is something that you're probably going to want to look more into on your own and go through the process on your own. So I'm just going to give you what I know, and then, and then uh, you can take it from there. But as someone who's been at in the animation industry for over 20 years, I was wondering what your experience has been in this regard when creating stuff, personally, uh, personally or friends and colleagues, etc. So, like, you can't just throw the copyright or trademark logo around willy-nilly and assume. There's an actual copyright process to go through, but with the, with the number of applications, that could take a bit of time. Does that mean that when you have work ready to put out there you really can't until it's officially protected under the copyright law unless you want it to be stolen by others that is though this may not be applicable to those outside the u.s now i'm wondering even more things anyway anywho i was just wondering if you had general tips or things to keep in mind about this so I, in the U.S., which I am living in, um, the copyright laws are simply this. When you make anything, for example, in my case, a drawing, although it could be a piece of music or, or, or a book or a published book or whatever it is, a document, but when I create a drawing on paper, it is automatically copyrighted to me. So that means that I own the property automatically. That means that I can make, the moment I create it, it's, uh, I own it, I could put it up online and then it's mine. Okay, so that, that, is, that kind of answers the, the big question uh, about whether or not you have to go through the process of having to get it officially written down. Now, here's the other thing. Does that mean that you can't put the copyright fee on it or whatever it is I think uh, you can you can willy-nilly put the copyright at the moment you create it you put the copyright on that thing because it is yours you own the copyright however however um, in or the, the 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 whole copyright process going through the process spending the money writing it putting it by, through the government website and doing all that stuff is important it is incredibly important if you are going to go out of your way to um protect that uh property so if you if you are going to legally protect it if you're gonna go out uh out of your way and police that property so that you can prove that it is yours and that somebody is using it and then you're going to want to therefore go through the proper channels why because it makes it a way easier if you're going to get lawyers involved to prove that you own the copyright because um it's it's just a little tricky to prove that you own the 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 thing that it came from you ideally ideally what you want is the, an actual physical product in front of you that you own that you have in your house and so you say see here's the physical product and that other person doesn't have the physical product i do because i made it uh digitally it's a little trickier because uh it only exists in your computer so ideally what you want is to probably have if you're going to have a drawing or something to distribute the object in the uh, least um, the lowest resolution possible I guess um, so that uh, there is some kind of way to enforce your intellectual property okay so but here's the other thing um, you are an artist 
you have a voice and your art can only be done by you and you can produce similar art or uh, create similar art. So again, it goes back to can X do it exactly like this and can this guy do it? And then usually it's a matter of, oh, you can see that this guy is the source. That person is not the source because they can't do what this person does. So it's a it's a voice thing. It's a it's a way that uh, you're putting yourself in the art, and therefore you can make more art of that ilk, while the other person can't because they are not you. Uh, that's another way to protect the thing, and the other way to protect your art is to be a human being that creates a relationship with those people who love your artwork. And that relationship creates a, mu a mutual respect. You respect everybody uh, because what you're doing for them is, is causing them joy. What you're doing for them is giving them information. What you're doing with, to, for them is changing something about who they are or giving them a... Po they are, you are creating an experience through your art to those people who respect, love, and uh, your, your work. And those people, in return... Uh, uh, respect your artwork, appreciate it, want to um, maybe uh, give you re the value, uh, monetary value in return for the value they're receiving from the work. And, and, and in that way, when you have a relationship with your audience, your audience will also go out of their way to respect you, to, uh, to respect your intellectual property, so that uh, they don't copy, they don't try to steal your work. And that sort of thing. So ideally what you want to do is also create a relationship with you as a, you as the artist want to create a relationship with 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 the audience, the, the people who from who, for whom you are creating the art. Because of being self-indulgent, being self-centered is going to cause divisions and people are going to abuse the heck out of you because you are a jerk. So... Um, uh, again, so that that's kind of the 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 thing. So uh, legally, the moment you create a thing, uh, it is yours. Okay, so um, uh, an IP, intellectual property, uh, that's a little bit different uh, because uh, intellectual properties uh, are ideas, and ideas um, uh, don't uh, belong to anybody. Uh, they're up in the air. You can't copyright an idea. But what you can do is execute upon said idea in a tangible form, and then that is the creation of your intellectual property. That is a piece of work that is uh, uh, visible uh, in the same way that the copyright uh, thing works. The moment you create, the more, moment you put it down, the moment you create all the assets for it, then uh, you own that. It's automatic. Uh, and so that you create that, that, that property is yours. That intellectual property is yours. You're, you've created it. You're, you've, you've put it down tangibly. As long as it's in your head, it doesn't, it's not, it's, it, it can't be protected. But the moment you put it down and you set it down, you start uh, constructing it, creating it, start building it, then it becomes your property. Now, uh, getting other people involved requires contracts, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're going to do that, then, yeah, you have to go through all this business stuff. You have to hire a lawyer to make sure that um, that whatever someone's helping you out with, um, everything's up in, in the up and up and there's some kind of agreement. Uh, and, and again, it has to be physical. The, 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 the whole idea here is that ideas just are nebulous um, and... And, uh, and the execution is what counts. So uh, it's the way you draw it, the way you create it, the way you produce it. And it has to be produced and created in the first place for it to belong to you in any way, shape, or form. Um, uh, the, the, as far as um, people stealing your work, it happens. Uh, you, you, you can't... Uh, there's only so much you can do when someone steals your work, especially if they belong in a country where the copyright laws don't apply in the same way. For example, uh, I was I was at the figure drawing uh, the other day. We were talking to to uh, one of my coworkers who happened to be f from the ex Soviet Union. She moved here why, uh, from the Soviet Union. She was an artist, and when she moved from the Soviet Union to the United States. And she wanted to take her artwork. Uh, she was not allowed to take more than five pieces of her own artwork because it belonged to the state. 
uh, in that country at the time, the artwork, any artwork you, you created belonged automatically to the state. And they allowed her, allowed her to take five pieces of work that she had produced to with her on, uh, when she left the country because uh, according to them, um, the artwork she created was part of, a na of their nat the national treasure of the government. So, uh, and, and, and again, and there's other countries where the copyright laws don't, don't apply and uh, people can and, uh, make money off of, uh, off of your intellectual property, off of your uh, uh, copyright. And uh, there's very little you can do about it, and you can fight it. You can, but the, you know the laws are going to be difficult and things like that. So uh, you can uh, go and police uh, work um, if somebody's making money off of your own work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, one of the things that I will say that, though is um, uh, if people are making money off of your work and you're not making any money off of your own work then um, it actually, uh, it, the, the people are in, in, in a way, uh, I mean, they're being jerks uh, because they're taking your work and making money off of it. But in a way, they're also proving that your work sells. <laughs> and, and, um, and if your work sells and you're not making any money, but they're making a lot of money, then that means that you're doing something wrong and you got to learn how to make the money that they're making off of your own work. So uh, you got to learn. Uh, so that means that you're terrible, terrible at selling, and you got to figure out a way to do to 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 copy what they're doing that is that is working, that's making them money, and then do it yourself, and then you s basically steal back the money that they're making because you're the originator, and you can make more of that stuff. Uh, so in a lot of ways, um, uh, sometimes it's a good testing ground. Uh, I knew a, I knew a guy who. Who once made a, a piece and uh, and put it online, and then that other person and somebody took it and put it on eBay, uh, and started making prints and put it on eBay to try to sell uh, prints of that work, and uh, this guy was like, well, uh, yeah, good luck to them, you know, uh, I can't make any money off of that. Uh, good luck uh, to them to see if they can make any money, and they didn't make any money uh, off of printing that, on, uh, putting making prints on eBay, and so um, sometimes, uh, you know. Uh, it depends. It depends on the work. It depends on, on whether or not anybody's going to uh, be making money off of things and et cetera, et cetera. So, and for the most part, you can uh, do a Google search to see if uh, uh, your work is being uh, put online uh, on websites and et cetera. And, and, and then uh, if you don't want, and if somebody's making money off of it, you could ask them politely to take it down. Uh, also, uh, most people then tend not to be making any money off of your work and it's kind of free advertising and it's only free advertising if and only if you have your work signed with your website and the copyright and your name all over it so that it's basically marketing for them so if somebody copies it and puts it on their website or whatever, it just points a big arrow straight back to you and so in a lot of ways that's Oh, that's kind of helpful because it means that people appreciate it enough to want to, to like the work and then if your name's all over it um, then people come back to you uh, the, the source where they can get more and possibly you could start uh, making prints or, 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 or get commissions or whatever it is so it, it's it's a, it's a little bit of everything it's a little bit of having to uh, live in a world where everybody's always taking your junk but at the same time, it's kind of in, you have to be, you have to know that it's your property and, you, you, and, and everybody out there needs to know that it is your property. You should be, put a big sign saying, this is copyrighted to me. Uh, uh, you know, that, that's, that, it, it's, it's important to have your name on it, have, uh, uh, put it out there, uh, clearly uh, being yours and uh, again your work is a signature of you your your uh, style etc etc uh, only you can produce the work you produce the way you produce it so the more distinct it is the more unique it is the more likely it is that people aren't going to be able to necessarily duplicate it because they can't be you I hope that answers your question. It's kind of a bit long-winded. And again, I'm not a lawyer. Um, you can go off and uh, search for the rest of the answers, the whole legal answers. And then what I'm going to also do in the description of this video, I'm going to put a link to another video, which I thought was very helpful, called uh, something about copywriting basics, 
where it kind of explains at least the U.S. copyright uh, law and, and, and the way it all works. But overall, just know that the moment you create something, you own it. The end. Unless you sign a contract giving the copyright to somebody else. But the moment you create it, uh, you own it. And unless there's something in, on paper saying that you have given the copyright to somebody else, they do not have any uh, uh, license or authority or legal way of using it for any purpose at all, period, uh, without your permission. So, uh, all right, so I hope that answers your question. And by the way, I just wanted to let everybody know that I do have a Patreon page. If you want to ask me questions, you could ask me the questions there, or you could ask me on the comments in this YouTube video below. However, I just wanted to point out that I do coaching there at my drawing website. As of the time of this recording, I have four uh, people that I'm coaching. I have one slot left if you want to take that up so that uh, if you're having fr you're frustrated doing uh, original work or trying to get your work done or or you need encouragement or you're you don't know uh, what you're doing wrong when it comes to drawing um, yeah sure go ahead join the coaching tier and then I will um, meet uh, with you via chat one time face to face find out what it is that you're having problems with and I'll start creating assignments for you so that we can work on what you need to work on and then I and then um, you return the assignments and then I, I give you some feedback and we go back and forth uh, via reco video recordings and etc cetera, etc cetera, and you will improve also if you join my patreon um, I do give giveaways every month so um, depending on your contributions how many times you get entered into the drawing and I do send off the rewards every uh, every month. Um, sometimes uh, there's, there's going to be Simpsons limited edition Simpsons posters. Most of the time, it's original art from me. Um, on occasion, I will send off some uh, a comic or or two or a book. Um, and uh, the other rewards are high-res JPEGs so that you could print out and decorate your place or have them in a folder so that you can have a good giant tabletop, um, uh, a coffee table book of just beautiful art at your table uh, and also some inspiration for you. And if you're higher up in the tiers, you also get uh, the PSD file so that you can see the process, how it's done. So uh, I highly, highly encourage you to uh, please support me on Patreon. That way also, um, it also encourages me to continue doing these videos. All right. So uh, thank you so much and I'll see you next time. All right. Bye.